Hey everybody, in this video I want to talk about a few tips and tricks that you can do in A-Sprite for the brush. So some of the things you'll see in this video is how you can advance the workflow with your brush. A few tips and tricks that you may not know about. We'll also be talking a little bit about painting with tiles. Oh, one thing before I start. This is a little bit of an advanced video on brush. So if you don't know the basics of the brush, I suggest that you check out my basic A Sprite video where I cover all the basics for the brush. Um, with that said, let's just get into the video. So the first thing I want to talk about is how you can paint tiles with your brush. I'm going to give you an example here. You can see I have my tile over to the left and you can see I'm just painting it out here. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that. It's quite simple. The first thing you do is make some kind of tile. Um, in this case, I'm going to use my little wall tile I've made here. Next up, you select the tile. So you take your selection tool and just select the entire tile. And the next step is pressing Control B and that will turn your tile into a brush. So there are three paint settings I want to talk about. They are up here in the top. It's called Pattern Align to Source, Pattern Align to Destination and Paint Brush. So let's just take one of the times so we can see how they works. So let's take Pattern Align to Source and this tile over here that I selected. This is our source when I uh, use the control B command on it. That becomes the brush source. So wherever I paint now, you can see it's always always going to be aligned with my uh, original tile that I drew. Um, and that is the align to the source. So you can see if I draw separate places, no matter what, it's always going to be fitting the same place, which can be super convenient. Though there are some cases you want to switch over and use pattern aligned to destination. What this basically means is that where you place your mouse and left click now is where this strokes source is going to be. So if I click here and paint, the source is where I made my first stroke. As soon as I release, it resets the source as well and there's no source destination. And you can see if I place it somewhere else, let's just place it somewhere random here that is now the current source of this stroke and you can see it does not align with any other tile that we had drawn. So that's the difference between align to source and align to destination. Last up we have this paintbrush and it's a little bit different. We don't really use this for tiles uh, but I'm going to show you what happens when you draw with it real quick. You can see it only paints with the outer edge of my tile. This is used more for brushes that are supposed to emulate certain paint brushes or if you have some kind of like pattern you want to place down uh, one click by one click. First off, I want to show you how you can also apply this to other tiles. So, so for example, we have a fence tile right here. I'm going to select it again, Control B, and you can now see I have it here. I've set it to align with destination. So now that we have the fence as a tile, one thing you can do is that you can click where you want the fence to start. So let's say we want it to start over here and you want it to end over here. Then you hold down shift and you can see I now can make a line with the tile, but you have to be super precise to like get it in there. But you can end working around that by holding down control and shift at the same time. You can see it kind of snaps to an angle here. So I can easily just like straight drag it where I want it to be. Uh, and it snaps to that one straight line. So that is one thing you can do it. I'm just going to do one more time. Click where I want it to start, shift and alt at the same time, and I can just drag it out where I want it to. This is the same as just making a line. Speaking of line tool, this tile thing, control B thing that we do to an object is not only applied to the brush. No, it works on any other object. So we can take out a line here. I'm just going to select a straight line and you can see I can make a tile line. I can even take out my rectangle tool here and make a big rectangle and boom, there we go. Have a big rectangle of my tiles. And not only that guys, it also works with the paint bucket. So let me just select this area here. Boom, there we go. Look at that, insane. So it really applies to any tool, the control B thing that you do, which is super, super handy. Cause some of them might use better for the bucket tool. Some of them might use better for the rectangle tool. Some might even work better for the circle tool or the line tool. So the fact that I can just select something in my image Control B and I now have a brush that paints that thing 
Um, that's super handy. And it's just about finding creative ways that you can use it. All right, but let's not get too far away from the brush because there's way more to the brush that I want to talk about. And the next option that I want to talk about is the ink option. We slightly covered this in the basic video as well, but in this video, I'm going to try and dig a little deeper into it and explain what the different inks really does. All right, so the first ink option is simple ink up here. Simple ink is the first option and it's basically just your standard option. So that is what you've probably been using if you've been using a sprite already. It's just your standard way of drawing with no fancy effect over it. Just a normal ink, your standard basic thing. There's actually no more else to say about it. I could keep on going on about how basic it is, but I'm not just because it's you, you probably already get it, so I'm going to move on to the next one. All right, the next ink option is up here, and it's alpha compositing. And uh, what it basically does is it adds an alpha to your ink. If you don't know what alpha is, let me just try and slide this around the middle here and draw something here. Take a different color and draw here, and you can see it's transparent. So you're basically choosing how much transparency you want in your ink with this one. I do want to say one thing. If you have the simple ink, you can also choose the alpha down here below this slider. So let me take some weird color and you can see here 100% and about 50% and about 25. So you can see there's different ways you can choose the alpha. Um, if it's zero, I guess it's an eraser. I didn't know that. I learned something too here. That's that's fantastic. Um, but yeah, so the alpha compositing and simple ink can more or less do the same thing. Um, if you have your alpha all the way up, it will just be drawing like you are with a normal uh, simple ink option. So that's the alpha compositing. The next option is copy alpha plus color. And it's a little hard to understand maybe if you don't see what's going on. But you can see here right now I'm drawing with 100% of my color in the alpha, which means it's not transparent at all. Let me go up and switch to the alpha compositing and set the alpha around the middle. So you can see when I draw over this now, it is, you can see through it, it's see-through, but it's this color, right? So if we go into the copy alpha plus color, and I do the sa exact same thing. I have this as my main color, but I make it around 50% transparent, and I try and draw over this guy now. Can you see that it, instead of making it transparent, it takes the amount of transparency and make it into a flat color. Basically, imagine that before you place down your transparency, it plays down a white color on top, and then it puts the transparency on top of that, meaning that it's not transparent, but you still get the transparent color, but as a flat color. That is the copy alpha color. Um, I have never used it myself. I'm sure it can be used in some way. Um, and now you know what it does. Let's move on to the next one. The next option I want to talk about is the alpha lock option. And it's super neat and it's really useful. Um, so first off, before I show how it works, I'm just going to draw a little circle here. And let's just draw like a, 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 some, a, some shapes around here so you can see what happens when I use it. So now that I shift my color to a purple pinkish and I shift the ink to the lock alpha, you can see my brush kind of disappear and only shows when I'm on top of something on my current layer. So what it basically does now, it only allows me to draw on top of what's already there. I've been using this a little bit for when I've been shading things. I've been like trying to shade this way, sort of like just use the alpha lock because it's a good way to, to like make sure that you don't go outside of the actual object and, and, and start drawing, um, like you, you don't start drawing outside the image like this. Uh, super cool, super neat. Just remember every time you wanna draw something only within an object and you don't want to draw outside the object, this might be a really good tool to use meanwhile. So that's the alpha lock ink. Let's move on. All right, the next option I wanna talk about is the shading ink. And this is a really, really neat ink option. So it's kind of in the name what it does. Let me try and show you here. I'm going to make a bigger brush and go into the ink shading. And now I, in my palette, have to select the shading colors. So these are my shading colors. I'm going to select these four because these are the colors that I'm going to be shading with. It's just a shading tool. You use it for shading objects. Um, 
there's not really any anything else to it right click is brighter and left click is darker um, so if you want to find a uh, efficient way of shading this shading ink is really really great and that's really what I want to say about the shading tool. Um, so that is all about the different ink tool. Hopefully these tools will also help your workflow in a sprite improve and be faster. So yeah, that's it for the inking tool. I hope that helped you out. I don't really have any more else to talk about in this video. So I hope that you got a little bit smarter and understand the brush tool a little more. There's just one last tip I want to give before I go off. And that is if you make a brush, for example, you can see here, if you click on your brush types, you can see I have the tile that we used earlier down here. You can save that if you don't want to lose it or if you want to, to save it for, for a later. So you can always go back and get your other brushes that you've been using earlier if you want to. So I really hope this video helped you guys out quite a lot. Um, I know some of the features in this video, when I figured them out, I was like revealed and saved a bunch of time. So hopefully some of these things can do the same for you. Before I end off the video, I have a few things I want to show and talk about. And one of those things are that every Monday to Friday, I stream over at Twitch TV slash Mortmort. Every Monday, it's uh, Community Day. Tuesday to Thursday it is anything creative and Friday is feedback Friday where I do giveaways for you guys and I give feedback on your guys work and we just talk and I try and help you improve your artwork so head over there if you want to join the streams you can also head over to my asset store where you can download some of my palettes and even a simple base all for free and there's also some other things in there for you to check out and my last shameless self-promotion is my shirt store where you can check some of my shirts out. I'll leave a link to everything down in the description. And uh, yeah, that's it for all the shameless self-promotion. And if you like what you saw in this video, make sure to give the video a like. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. And with that said, I want to give a special thanks to Dr. Arkist and Rai Rai Kutai on Twitch and all the other subscribers. Thank you so much for supporting me. And that's it for this video. Goodbye.